Welcome, in this video I'm going to show you how you can perform a Man Whitney U test using Microsoft Excel. I've set up a bit of my spreadsheet, the yellow ones are the ones that could be changed and in blue I'm going to be entering some formulas. Um, the gender was given as 1 and 2 which was coded as male and female and I have an opinion about something which ranged as you can see from 1 till 5. Um, I don't have any missing values, so you should also always remove those. So I have up till row 46, and the first row are headings, so I have 45 cases. So let's begin with performing this test. Um, the first thing is the number of groups, and I can use a count if function for that. So equals count if, and then the range is uh, simply column A, and then the group is going to be group number 1. And I can now simply copy paste this down and this will be the sum is the sum of the two above and that gives me 45. Then I need to actually uh, use this little formula which uh, simply says to take the number of um, cases in each group, multiply it by that same amount, add one and then divide the whole thing by two and then I can copy paste this down and this does it for the males. Then for the rank and I need to use average rank and I'm going to be using that in column C. So I'm going to rank all the cases and that's simply a rank and then I'm going to be using average ranking. I'm going to be ranking this number based on the entire column uh, B and I want them actually to be in ascending order. Then I can simply copy paste this down, Control C, Control V, or if you go with your mouse to the lower right corner, where it changes into this big plus, then double click and it should copy paste it all the way down. Alright, we have a long way to go, but we're getting there. Determine the average rank and sum of ranks per group. So for each group, I now need to do a sum if. So sum if, and then first the range that had the groups that was column A. The criteria for the first group was that it's going to be a 1 while uh, the next thing is the sum range and that's going to be the sum of the ranks so that's column C. I can then close this off and simply copy it down for the males and it does the same thing but then for the males. The sum uh, of the ranks is actually being done with the same formula, but then sum if, and then again range A double dot A, the criteria was in G3, and then column C, the average of the ranks, and I can simply copy paste this down. Oh sorry, I used here sum if instead of average if, and that's the one we needed. So these are the average ranks, and that's the sum of the ranks. Then we need to determine the difference between uh, what I call the, the max rank, that was actually this one, the step 2, and uh, this one, the one we had over there. So that's going to be this one, it's the other way around, minus, and then this one, and that nicely gives me 88.5, and I can copy paste this down for the mills, that's 285.5. I notice here I have a user-defined function. That's a function i written myself that takes as an input um, the two ranges. And if you set output to 1, it will actually give you this U value. Then we need to calculate a Z value, because I'm not going to do the exact test. I'm just going to approximate it using Z, which is actually commonly done. And for that, I need uh, this fancy formula. And that says to take the u1, that is this value up here, and then subtract the number of cases uh, in each group, multiplied with each other, and then divided by 2. So that was up here, so this one. And then uh, let's block that by using f4, so it places dollar signs everywhere around it, times, then the one underneath, that one, f4, with the dollar signs divided by 2 and the dollar signs prevent it from actually changing if I go down. So, as you might see here, we now actually have the same uh, value, only with a uh, positive and a negative in there. So, 
that for the denominator will not be any much of a difference. The next big thing is determine the number of tied scores. Now that's a tricky one. So what we're going to do is we need to count how many ties we actually have. So how many times does this 1.5 actually occur? But I only need it once. So what I'm going to do is a long if function. If, and I'm going to count, uh, perhaps it's easier if I start with an example up here. So 18 is if, and then I'm going to do a count if. The range is going to be everything before it. And that's going to be fixed on the F, uh, the C1. So dollar signs there. And the criteria is going to be this one. Now, if this shows up, so if this 18 had shown up before, so if it's greater than a zero, um, then we shouldn't have to do anything. Otherwise, I wanted to count how many times uh, the 18 actually occurs. So then count if again, then the entire range, C, and then the criteria of, in this case, C5, the 18. And this should actually give me nicely how many times the 18 occurs. But if I copy it down, for example, it doesn't show anything because it already counted the 18 once. I can put this on in the top and actually then copy paste it down. And because this is only going till there, I need to do that again and again. And now it actually has all of them in there. So that's and that one. Um, that brings us to uh, determine the adjusted ties, which is actually the previous result raised to the power of 3, and then a minus once, and then divided by 12. But only, of course, if there is a value. So in here, I'm going to say equals if this one equals nothing, double quotation signs, then nothing. Otherwise, open parentheses, this one to the power of 3 minus that value once divided by 12. All right, we're getting close to finishing this whole thing, so this was the hardest part, or at least one of the hardest parts. The next thing is then to simply sum all of these results up, so that's going to be the sum of column E. Well e, there we go. And then we can finally calculate the denominator, which is a very big formula, but it's not that bad. We have all these values. So it's the square root, SQRT, of uh, the number of cases of the first group times the second group. So um, where are my number of cases? This one times that one. And then we need to divide that by the total number of cases n uh, times n minus 1, so we're going to say n, which was up here, times, and then the same n minus 1, and close the parentheses. Uh, close also the parentheses of the denominator. And then this gets multiplied by something, so times, open up another set of parentheses, and yet another one. There it says n to the third minus n divided by 12, so n to the third minus n, close one parenthesis, divided by 12. And last but not least, minus that sum of ti, which we had up here. And then I can close this set of parentheses and the last set, and I'm fully done. That gives me the standard error, and then finally, I actually have to determine the z-value, which is uh, my, uh, where is it, my numerator, which was uh, this one, divided by the standard, uh, the denominator, the standard error, and that gives me minus 2.845. As you can see, I have here the same result, uh, again, using my user-defined function. Last but not least, then the significance, which is actually the normal distribution. So I can use uh, two times because I want a two-tail test. One minus norm dot s dot dist. 
because it's a standardized normal distribution of the absolute value, so ABS, of this Z value, close the ABS, I want it to be cumulative, and then close all the parentheses, and that gives you 0 0.00444. You can also use the old norms dist function, which is the same, uh, 1 minus norm s dist abs, because that by default is cumulative, and that gives you the same oh, result. Again, here is my user-defined function that actually does all of that for you, but it requires you to enable macros. Uh, in the future, I will put a link to this Excel file in the description below. It's not entirely finished yet, but uh, it will come one day. Uh, let me know if you're really curious about it, um, then I might be able to speed it up a little bit. All right, um, sorry for the long ride, but um, uh, there is unfortunately no faster way, to my knowledge, to do this with Excel. I hope you found the video helpful. If so, please subscribe because that really helps out. And uh, thank you for watching. On my companion website in the description below, you can perhaps find some more information about the man with the U-test.